Joining us now is Republican Congressman Mike Turner and Chair of the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, thank you for being with us this morning, sir. I understand you have a briefing with the FBI a little bit later today. What are the questions you have for them, sir? Well, Jonathan, well, certainly that is the first up question. How could this ever happen? As we're learning more about how these events unfolded, it becomes even more unexplainable and unbelievable that this individual would have had the ability to pull this off by himself, uh, that this vulnerability would have been there at the event, and that he would have had access to it and the ability to, to execute in a manner which put Donald Trump's life at risk. Uh, thank God Donald Trump uh, is alive and, and his iconic rise from the stage uh, to show America that he's alive and that, you know, he, his strength uh, was, was shown. That certainly plays a tremendous amount of impact on world leaders to see, you know, the strength of Donald Trump. Chairman, this isn't the first Secret Service security lapse we've seen in our country. And something we've been grappling with all morning is this question of, is it a resource issue or is it a protocol issue? Do you have an understanding? Yeah, those are two of the, the, the questions, uh, right? But the, um, on the protocol issue, it also goes to why is it that he was not shot until after he was shooting, when we obviously know there were a number of individuals who identified both his location and that he had a weapon. Uh, then also on the issue of resources, why wasn't the perimeter larger? Why weren't there more people that were there protecting uh, for President Donald Trump? All of those are questions we're going to get to, but the reality is that in the end, this is something that's going to land on somebody's desk as they're responsible, and we want to find you know, who that is and how these decisions were made, but also how this came about where this kid, who seemingly did any, nothing in his life up to this point that was extraordinary, was able to uh, take advantage of what was an obvious vulnerability. Right, and the distance, less than 450 feet away from a former president. Congressman, your committee, what role can that play in this investigation? Well, certainly we'll be working with uh, the Government Oversight Committee, of which I'm a member, the Judiciary Committee and the Intelligence Committee, and even Homeland um, Security Committee. This will go across several, as it should. Uh, this is going to be an unfolding investigation uh, because it is going to, to uh, you know, involve not only agencies but individuals and certainly the, the circumstances of this shooter and how he ended up on that roof. Congressman, considering that we don't have the answers to these questions, and considering the Republican National Convention is still going forward, I have to ask you this, and I understand it's a difficult question to answer, but how on earth can we have any confidence that we have sufficient security at an event like the one we are having this week when we don't have the answers to the questions we all have about Saturday evening? Right. Well, I certainly I've called for you know reassessment of the security plans for both conventions, and I think that the perimeters should be enlarged. I think we were just hearing from your own reporter that in fact the perimeter is being enlarged. That does make a difference. The fact that, that you can control the space, you can control access, uh, that certainly lessens overall the risk. Representative, you've long served this country with an eye on security, even serving as the president on NATO at one point for the U.S. As you look at this moment, how do you judge it to its historical comparisons of fragility and concern for this country? Well, I think, uh, you know, first off, the, the, the call for unity is, is absolutely real. And I think it's been one that has been going on even before this event occurred. But it certainly is crystallizing in this event. And right now you have, you know, Biden, who's looking to going in his convention where his party's not even sure they want him to be the candidate. And Donald Trump going to his convention, where his convention is going to be about why he should be president of the United States, why they grapple with whether or not Biden shouldn't even be the candidate. And they're going to be picking him to be the candidate because of his strength, because of his, his commitment to this country. And also, there's going to be a tremendous contrast between you know, Biden's failure on the border, Biden's failure on national security, Biden's failure on the world stage. And, of course, we all saw last night why his staff say that he should not do anything after 8 o'clock. In that speech he gave, he was short of breath. He had hardly ability to finish each sentence. He misspoke. He misstated things. But overall, he's not the candidate of unity. He did not apologize. He took the opportunity to campaign in the middle of the speech, and he certainly didn't offer anybody anything who wasn't already for Joe Biden, and that's just a few. Chairman, as you are the head of the Intel Committee, I want to ask you about these blinking lights we keep hearing from the FBI director. He's for months, he's been sounding the alarm that there are flashing lights when it comes to potential terror attack or issues, events at home here domestically in the United States. Do you see the same concerns? Absolutely. We see the same intelligence. I've said repeatedly that I agree with uh, the director. Um, I was, you know, 
I, I was very concerned as we go into this final uh, election season uh, that there are foreign nationals uh, with terrorist ties in our country and what that could mean for the security, both for our conventions and for our candidates. Uh, the uh, I think it's certainly a continuing threat, and it goes right directly to Joe Biden's failure of leadership and the fact that our border is open. Uh, the, the director has made it clear uh, that the intelligence uh, indicates that individuals who are affiliated with ISIS and international terrorist organizations have made their way across Biden's open border. They're in the United States, and they pose a risk to both Americans and certainly to our electoral process this year. But to be clear, some of the threat is coming from inside the House, too. You look at the events over the weekend, it's not just immigration. It's here, it's domestic terrorism. That's what some of the reports also show, Congressman. So what needs to happen? What needs to change there? Well, this is, that, you know, that first off, that, that, is, that is a misnomer. That, that pales in comparison to organized, structured terrorists who are located in the United States, who are communicating with outside terrorist groups and organizations, who are actively uh, looking at ways in which uh, to take, to uh, uh, carry out terrorist acts. And that is what the director is saying. And that those individuals are individuals that the Biden administration has led across the border. The director has said so. The, certainly the intelligence indicates it. Uh, and that is the, the, the threat and vulnerability that is a risk to our national security directly from Biden's policies at the border. Just to be clear, are you saying that domestic terrorism is not a concern at this moment? No, I didn't say that. You, you, you tried to diminish the fact that a, a chosen Biden policy that allowed terrorists into our country who are actively a threat, threat to our country um, is, is, you know, easily comparable to any individual like this, um, this shooter who, who, who found his way upon this roof. It's not. The reality is, is that, that there is a, you have the director of the FBI running across the country telling everybody that we have this strong threat because he's not getting anywhere with the administration. He's not getting the border closed. He's not getting these people rounded up. He's not getting these people identified and, and, and arrested. And that's why he's telling you, because Chair the administration isn't listening. They're not recognizing the threat that they have placed this country in. Chairman, I, I want to be clear. I'm not, I'm not attempting to put words in your mouth at all. I'm only trying to address both issues. And I hear you loud and clear on this one issue. So tell me, in 2025, from an administration, what do you need to see to make it clear that we're not sleepwalking through threats like this? Again, I understand the foreign component, what you're saying, loud and clear. But in terms of domestic issues, how someone can get so close to a presidential nominee, to a foreign president, right. again, well, for people here. They're obviously not comparable, right? They're sure. not comparable. Yes. And we don't know yet the story of how this kid got here, right? We don't know how this shooter got on this roof. Now, I again, I'm, I'm very skeptical that he ended up on this roof having done nothing else in his life that is extraordinary, that he would have been able to accomplish this on his own. We'll have to see. We'll have to see the circumstances that resulted in almost Donald Trump being assassinated on the stage at a political rally. Um, that is what the investigation is going to be. And, and we don't know the circumstances. And hopefully we get some details as that investigation goes on. Great. Congressman, yes. before you go, I want to talk about the VP sweepstakes with you. I'm sure you've got some thoughts on that and you can offer your opinion. Congressman, do you have a preferred candidate? What would you expect now to see in the vice president for Donald Trump? I prefer the candidate that Donald Trump picks. Uh, I think Donald Trump is going to do an excellent job of putting together uh, both his vice president and ultimately his cabinet, uh, as he did last time. Uh, he's got a great focus on what needs to be done uh, to, to change the direction of this country, to close the border, to address this out-of-control spending that's resulting in unbelievable inflation, uh, and also to you know, reinstill our stature in the international community as a result of this failed foreign policy of the Biden administration. I think he's laser-focused, and I believe he's going to pick a great team. Congressman, hopefully we can talk again soon. Congressman Mike Turner, thanks for making time for us on a busy, busy morning for him, the chair of the House Intelligence Committee.